All right, everyone, we start off today with some caution about an upcoming grift. You can see it in the news cycle right now. Bird flu in focus. Uh, to be clear, hey, YouTube, don't ban me, bro. What I'm saying is effectively what the CDC is saying, and that seems to be the gold standard for YouTube's terms of service, so I figure it's probably not a big problem. International health authorities and national health authorities have looked into the whole H4N1 thing, the avian flu currently being played up in the media, hyped up about, uh, it's going to infect your milk. You know, mice are getting sick in our experiments. It's a big problem. Yeah, raw milk comes attendant with potential health hazards. We, we all know this. It is potentially a pathogenic vector. Um, the idea, though, seems to be a, a, multiple, a multitude of things. First and foremost, uh, you saw uh, the other day on the local news, actually, WCAX, uh, there was an experiment that was done uh, with pasteurization, flash pasteurization. And they said, well, while it destroys most of the bird flu virus, it might not destroy them all. Then there was a rider at the end of their report, right at the tail end, lie by structure, because some people, of course, had gone off and done other things when this report was on. So they imbibed the concept that flash pasteurization, uh, pasteurization is unsafe, right? Uh, then they said, but, you know, the additional heating methodology used prior to the pasteurization, they didn't test for that in this study. There are a lot of shenanigans going on right now, and when shenanigans are going on, there's usually a reason for it. The fact that this is all uh, centrally coordinated probably is meaningful, too. The fact is, you are very, very unlikely to get bird flu from milk. Cattle workers, people who do ranching and stuff, they're at an excessive risk of getting bird flu. Even then, you've got like three fucking cases in the whole United States. It doesn't appear that it's typically associated with entering the human population. This is probably why, while they've said this is a disease of note, it could be highly lethal to humans if it did break through in the human feeding uh, food chain, so to speak, um, whether that's via milk or uh, interacting with birds or, or whatever it happens to be, that the risk overall remains low. But you would never know that if you watch most of the legacy media articles now, do you? The disconnect between trust the science in the literal sense, so the people that are actually experimenting with infected milk, that are, are you know, that their health authorities comment commentating on uh, avian flu, the disconnect between them and what you see from the wonk class and the political class is basically night and day. That worries me. It worries me because it seems like they're trying to astroturf people into panic mode. Uh, you saw that the stocks in certain pharma companies the other day uh, skyrocketed on the new news of another additional human case of uh, bird flu. Um, it seems like, number one, they want money. They want investment. Companies that are lagging off because certain other medical things that they developed recently are falling out of favor uh, in a big way. Uh, so they want money, and, and they're part of the political class. Those are multi-billion dollar international corporations. Politicians want to fortify the U.S. election. I do not believe that these things are coincidental. I don't believe the timing was coincidental. What I think is happening is that the legacy media is helping to coordinate an astroturf to convince people this is some sort of novel thing. The virus was already there. It already at least sporadically infected humans. And I'd like to tell people something else, and most people don't know this. There are an awful lot of people at any given time that are infected with some sort of virus, but they don't show any symptoms. Asymptomatic variants of viruses do exist. Um, this is beneficial, by the way. Ebola is a great example. Ebola burned its way through tens of thousands of people in West Africa, in, in Guinea and Liberia and Sierra Leone, years ago, leading to the rise of uh, memes about the end of the world. Oh, we're all basically going to be, it's, it's blood for the blood god, you know, Ebola chan and stuff like that. And it was funny at the time. Uh, it was very amusing. I had uh, Toho Picture by Zeno and Oaklander. I overlapped that onto uh, various uh, footage of buildings collapsing and nukes and stuff like that. And people liked it at the time. Some people, when I took it down because it was hit with a copyright uh, infringement notice, uh, people wondered where it went. It was, it was an amusing time. What they discovered a few years later, after the pandemic of Ebola had pretty much snuffed itself out, was that a large number of people had developed an asymptomatic infection. This is fucking Ebola that we're talking about. We're talking about, with most, with most variants, a 30% death rate. It can be upwards of 90% depending on how it infects you. It's similar to Yersinia pestis 
the uh, Black Plague. If it goes uh, uh, into certain parts of your body disproportionately, you're probably fucked. Regular old Ebola infection, oh yeah, you're pooping blood and stuff like that. We'll keep you hydrated and give you some fucking painkillers, hopefully. And the hope is that uh, your system clears it and you don't die. And uh, with modern technology, eh, you've got a better than 50-50 chance of survival. So, you know, that's a blessing now, isn't it? There were asymptomatic infections. We did not wipe out the Ebola pandemic. It would have continued to expand infinitely had not an, uh, uh, a less lethal variant uh, mu uh, mutated into existence. We've, we've seen this before. We've seen this with Hong Kong, another medical topic that is verboten to talk about. Uh, you have strains that tend to become more transmissible, but they become less deadly. Uh, evolution tends to favor that. But there's currently no evidence of any systemic pathology by which the avian flu here, the bird flu, is even going to enter human beings. They're saying, well, if it gets into pork, it'll be a big problem. Dude, it's already in the pork. It's already in the pigs. What do we tend to do with uh, pork when we consume it? We tend to cook it at a fairly high temperature because we don't want parasites and things like that. And crispy bacon is better than soggy bacon. I like it a little bit in between. It's got to have a little give to it. Some people, they char their bacon until it basically resembles charcoal. Uh, I don't do that. I keep it a little bit on the leathery side. That's about right for like a BLT or something like that. You can have a little bit more wiggle if you're just eating it on the side on its own with like some eggs or something. But it, it's cooked, right? We, we, uh, t we tend to cook pork before we eat it. Milk is pasteurized. Birds. Who eats raw birds? Well, I mean, if they're insane, then you might see some street urchin munching on a dead seagull without roasting it with at least a lighter or something like that. But generally, they're cooked. This will denature the virus. This virus is not good at dealing with heat. This has been pointed out by health experts at the CDC, at the WHO, at numerous uh, universities with medical school uh, attachments, uh, that the pasteurization process indeed does actually work. But then we've got these AstroTurf studies that attempt to delude the public. So it's not news, it's, it's more like disinfo, into thinking that the threat is bigger than it is. Nonetheless, they are trying to do it again. The powers that be are trying to panic you with the bird flu in order to fortify elections and get a lot of money and sell products that nobody really needs, etc. It's probably not a good idea to drink raw milk. Yes, I know, I, some people just hit the unsubscribe button right now. It's probably not a good idea. We pasteurize it for a reason. Um, while I would try raw milk, I don't think I would be so much of an aficionado that, I'm, uh, that, that I would drink it on the reg. Uh, I, I prefer it pasteurized myself. We also pasteurize certain juices for some reason. I'm not exactly 100% sure, because I don't think that oranges are capable of carrying bird flu, but... They do it anyway, <laughs> for some reason. But they're trying to uh, delude people and panic them. Get a little panic buying going, and oh, by the way, it just it coincidentally happens to overlap with the U.S. election as well. You know, we're marching on towards June. What a coincidence. <laughs> what a coincidence. That's about all. Peace out.